So we know that we are stretching you into some different ways of looking at things because unless you are willing to accept that you are a vibrational being who lives in a vibrational universe, then you cannot begin to understand how things are happening in the way they are to you or to anyone else. In other words, until you make the conscious association between the source energy part of you and the part of you who is here focused in your physical body, you have no real guidance. You can't begin to consistently move in the direction of that which you are becoming. Most physical beings, almost as soon as they are born, begin monitoring their behavior and measuring it against the results that they get from other humans. So if you behave in a way that pleases the humans who are near you, they smile and they reward you with words and behavior. But if you displease them, you know that right away too, because they frown and they withhold and they punish. And so without meaning to, you've been trained away from your guidance system by well-meaning others who are doing something that is virtually impossible. They're attempting to sort out all manner of manifestation and put it into piles of good and not so good and less good and really less good and terrible. They've sorted out these piles and, and then they join together in groups as they try to protect their piles. It's such an interesting thing, the limitation of these piles. And what we're encouraging you to do is rather than trying to join the group with the loudest voice or even the group with the strongest influence on you for whatever reason, we're encouraging you to try to let go of the influence that others have set upon you while you reach for the influence of the source within you. And what we want you to know is each time you offer one of those requests, it is pure to us. In other words, we stand in your vortex receiving your request. Your inner being becomes the vibrational equivalent of each and every request that you set forth. But as we said at the beginning of our conversation here with you today, often you don't go with your rocket. You stay outside the vortex, so to speak, justifying why you need or why you want the improvement. And as you beat the drum of the injustice that you're living, I don't have enough and it's not fair and I've never had enough and it's never been fair. And those people around me don't have enough and that's never been fair. What you do, you don't mean to, but what you do is you keep active in yourself a vibration that prevents you from joining the vibration of your desire. That's why your desire doesn't feel good to you. Your desire doesn't feel good to you when you doubt it. Your desire doesn't feel good when you don't believe it. Your desire doesn't feel good when you don't feel worthy of it. Your desire doesn't feel good when you are in a state of blame or guilt or anger or frustration. When you feel those negative emotions, what it means every single time is, oh, you launched a desire. Yes, you did. And your desire is with the larger part of you and is present tense in terms of the vibrational creation. But as long as you are feeling negative emotion, it means you're not up to speed with your desire. And that's logical in many cases, isn't it? Because what's been happening and what you've been observing is usually the reason that you're offering the vibration that you're offering. Most people are responding to what's happening around them. If someone is rude to you, maybe somebody you love, maybe somebody you don't even know, but if someone is rude to you and you observe their rudeness, you usually have a knee jerk response to that. And if you keep it up, you're going to develop a pattern of believing that people are rude or of believing that you are inferior in some way and attracting it. In other words, you're going to get a complex if you keep focusing upon things that keep happening and keep them active in your vibration. So what this gathering is about is about you deciding that you're going to offer your vibration on purpose because your vibration equals your point of attraction. The law of attraction, which is the powerful law that manages this universe and everything that exists. It is a law that responds to vibrational frequencies. 
And the only reason that humans aren't more keenly aware of this law is because most humans are unaware that they have a vibrational frequency. They're not putting it together. They're not noticing that their emotions are the key to their alignment or resistance to the vibration of who they are. But once you begin to accept or even consider the idea that you are source energy, a part of which has come forth into this body and that the larger part of you still remains non-physically focused, still offering this powerful vibration. And that when you in your physical body launch a rocket of desire, that your inner being becomes immediately the vibrational equivalent of that new expanded beingness. And that then your relationship in your physical body to this new expansion has shifted a little bit. In other words, you really owe it to yourself to keep up with your own expansion. And when you do, oh, life is so good. You get an idea and it feels foreign at first, but then you ponder it and you consider it and you make it more familiar. You practice it, you visualize it, you bring yourself little by little into alignment with it. And when you do, when there's no resistance offered within you, when the vibration between what you want and what you're thinking here and now are the same vibration, it manifests all over the place for you. In other words, you just can't keep from manifesting what you believe. What you believe and what you expect are manifesting all around you as evidence of what you believe and what you expect. But humans don't tell the story that way usually. They don't say, I get what I think about. They say, I get stuff and some of it I like and some of it I don't like, but I can't figure out what's the common denominator. I think that I am living a karmic response to past lives. It must be something like that. No, 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 no. I know what it is. I know what it is. There's a conspiracy against me. I think it's the government. No, 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 no. I know what it is. I was born into the wrong religion and I'm being punished for that. You come up with really screwy things or you say, it's my employer's fault. That's a big one. Oh, here's the biggest one of all. It's my mother's fault. <laughs> I'm certain that we got off on the wrong foot. If she had been wiser, things would have gone better for me. And what we're wanting you to realize is you learned a lot of vibrational patterns from a lot of different places. But the bottom line is your vibrational pattern, what you believe and what you expect is what you're getting. It's what you're getting. It's what you're getting. And we just want to show you that if what you're getting is a match to what you're wanting, then our work here is done. But if there are things that you desire that you're not getting, if you want to feel clear minded and you're confused, then there's more work to do. If you want to be healthier than you are, then there's more work to do. If you want to have more fun than you're having, then there's more work to do. If you want to be more prosperous than you are, then there's more work to do. And we want you to know that there is always eternally, don't let this get you down, more work to do because you're constantly sifting and constantly asking and constantly then being given the choice of moving in the direction of your newfound request or not. And you're going to discover that as you move in the direction of the desires that are born every day then life feels good to you. You cannot get enough of it. You wake up refreshed and eager. You're like those little kids you see. Don't you see them? They hit the floor running every day. They cannot wait to get. And you wonder what is the intrigue with that pile of toys that they've been playing with for so long. What is it about that room or that little box of toys or that friend across the street? What is it that they keep discovering new eagerness for life? And then you say as a sort of burned out adult, well, they'll get over that soon enough. <laughs> and we want to say to you, we want you to never get over that frisky free feeling of the new discovery of life. Jerry and Esther every now and again will say well we'll just stay in they're living in hotels mostly we'll just stay in and we'll get some work done and they have a good time while they're in working they get along well and their work 
is delicious to them but then they'll go out and life will call them they had a wonderful experience the other day they went to take the car out to put a package in the FedEx box and the car wouldn't start the battery was dead and at first they thought oh man what's going on with us and then the desire to go to the FedEx box resurfaced and so Esther called triple a and in 20 minutes the nicest man came it was raining he had a big yellow raincoat on he brought his jumper cables he didn't quite know how to hook up this new Cadillac it was weird Jerry figured it out which thrilled Esther they got the car going they're in love with life again they're inside and even though it's raining ah we're rolling there's nothing that can keep us from rolling they called the Cadillac agency come right in he said that morning Jerry had awakened and said oh I would give anything for a really good bowl of beans and <laughs> Esther said it's only a few weeks and we'll be home and you can get a really good bowl of beans and right next to the Cadillac agency was a really good bowl of beans <laughs> so the Cadillac agency they could not have been nicer the people in the restaurant could not have been nicer they had one of the best days of their experience as they spent an extra hour in the restaurant talking to the waiter about her career and what she's doing she's going to be an architect you would have really liked her <laughs> and as Jerry and Esther went back to their hotel room later that day Esther said and then Jerry said and then Esther said and then Jerry said this was just the best day this was just the best day where a problem presented itself the solution did too a question presented itself an answer did too and in the process we got to play with all of these new people that we never would have been able to play with before they were so high on life so full of fun in other words we want to say to you that your alignment with source happens in the oddest sorts of ways and when you accept that life is supposed to present itself to you and will and out of it will come your reasons to interact your reasons to explore your reasons to express your appreciation through dollars and through words your reason to utilize your own mind your ability to discover your own solutions in other words what is life if it is not a constant unfolding as we speak to you about this day and we know you have days like this and you know what we're talking about where unexpected wonderful things turn up in all kinds of unexpected and wonderful places we want you to understand that there's a vortex full of circumstances and events and unfoldings that as they happen they are leading you to exactly who you are and what you want we want you to know that things are always working out for you through the path of the least resistance that you've got going on things are always working out for you even a dead battery was Jerry's path to beans <laughs> things are always working out for you it was Jerry and Esther's path to the inspiring of a young woman who moved from Texas all the way to New York didn't like it moved back to Philadelphia just looking just trying to find her place just trying to discover who she is who knew she would discover who she is while Jerry's discovering beans you see what we're getting at in other words cooperative components being gathered together in a dance that is full of fun and adventure that's what you're all about we just want you to know that if you will stand in a place of knowing that things are always working out for you things are always working out for you and you begin to look for the evidence of them working out rather than for the evidence of them not working out as you accept everything that comes to you as part of the path to lead you right to the vortex and the culmination of so many things that you've put there what you begin to discover is how fun it is to wake up every morning and dive into the dynamics of your personal experience